listening to the EPT Works Listen, Love, Give podcast. Hi, I'm Dr. Annette Cardioli, the Forgiveness Doctor. I'm here to help you create phenomenal health, happiness, and new life with energy, intuition, and forgiveness. EPT is short for Emotional Polarity Technique, an innovative holistic emotional therapy that will change your life for good. You can subscribe to this podcast, get free EPT training at eptworks.com and like us on Facebook. Have you ever been treated unfairly? I'm not talking about getting cut off in traffic or getting a small scoop of ice cream when everyone else's one scoop is ginormous. I'm talking about the kind of assault verbally and physically that you didn't do anything to deserve. You were just trying your best to be helpful and kind and out of nowhere, there is this abuse or trauma dealt to you in your life. This is the kind of hurt a child faces when her older brother or even a parent constantly beats her down, telling her she is worthless and deserves to be beaten. This is the kind of hurt we witness when we learn of a child who has been sexually abused by her grandfather for years. This is the kind of hurt a woman or man, for that matter, faces when a spouse constantly berates them or physically assaults them without any just cause. This is the kind of hurt you face when a drunk driver causes the death of your teen daughter. This kind of unjustified hurt has a way of bringing out the worst in all of us. Not just the person who was hurt, but this kind of tragedy brings out the worst in all of us. An abused wife may hate her abusive husband, and we don't blame her for that hatred. As a community, we hold anger and hatred for the drunk driver who kills our neighbor's daughter. We hold anger and hatred for the perverted sexual offender and the drug dealer who supplies the addict. We hold anger and hatred for the addict who won't get clean and keeps abusing his family. Emotions of contempt, anger, and hatred boil inside of us as we try to make sense of the abuse and hurt that we had no way of preventing. These kinds of experiences are the ones we can't own. Instead, they take ownership of us. By their very nature, they take away our power to love and forgive and still trust God and all that is good. If ignored and not healed with love and forgiveness, the anger and hatred you have a right to will make you sick and destroy all the good God has for your life. This is what today's podcast is about. What to do with anger and hatred I have a right to. I'm going to talk about how releasing this type of anger and hatred will empower your life, not make you more vulnerable. How holding this anger not only prevents you from having a better life, it blocks you from receiving healing in your life and in your children's lives. I'll also talk about why you need to release this type of anger and hatred now. And I give you some forgiveness statements that target anger and hatred that comes from the worst traumas and can be the hardest to let go of. Let's start by talking a little bit about why, instead of just calling this anger, I have decided to call it anger I have a right to. Over the years, I have helped some people, as you might imagine, who have experienced some really terrible abuse. Early on, I noticed that I would release anger for just about every reason. Anger that mom didn't stop dad from hurting me. Anger that I wasn't big enough to stop dad from abusing mom. Anger that it was my fault. Anger because dad abused me. Anger because my husband didn't care if I hurt. You get the idea. I got a client one day who said to me, I have a right to be angry. I don't think it's good for me to let go of this anger. 
in that moment, I realized that this kind of anger, this justifiable anger, is not something that people feel they need to let go of. They see it as a necessary emotional stance. It's their protection from this ever happening again. It's their resistance to the person who hurt them. And mostly it's their compensation to pay for the hurt that was unjustly done to them. I began to notice that when people told me their terrible trauma story, they could get me to feel the same anger, the same justifiable hatred toward their abuser they felt. This was a problem with this energy of the anger I have a right to. Instead of tapping into the power of love and forgiveness, these wounded people could get me to be their ally in justifiable anger and hatred for their unfair trauma story. It rendered me powerless to release the trauma in their life, and it rendered them powerless to write a brand new story for their life. One of the power to love and forgive. A story that opens space in the victim's life for God to step in and make the wrongs right. You see, the person who holds anger and hatred I have a right to, is doing it to pay the bill for the trauma the abuser has caused to them. The victim expects the abuser to pay for his crime, and when he doesn't, the victim makes him pay by her anger and hatred. In this way, she creates justice for the crime of, of the abuse. She has no power to make the abuser pay, so she holds the anger and hatred he really does deserve as the penalty she serves to him so she can feel vindicated. I have seen many women in my course of my practice go to court over and over against an abusive ex-husband. I've seen a few men in the same situation, and even though they deserve to win, over and over they will show up in court and lose to the abusive ex-husband. Even though she's right, somehow the abuser keeps winning. The reason the abuser wins is because she shows up. The victim shows up with the penalty she imposed on him. The anger she has a right to, and the judge senses there is nothing to penalize the abuser for. The abuser's already paid the price. The victim holds the anger and the hatred against the abuser, and the energy in the courtroom is, this is already even, and the abuser wins every time. By releasing this anger you have a right to, you open up space for God to make the wrongs another has done to you right. You give up being the one to right the wrong, which, by the way, is a huge burden. This opens space that allows both you and the offender to be healed. Did you hear that? You cannot let the offender off the hook without opening a pathway so that they get healed too. When I say I'm not going to be the one to punish you by holding hatred and anger and withholding love from you, when I stop being the one who is the penalizer of what you have done to me in my life, I open up space where God can right the wrongs, can heal the hurts that have been done to me. So in that moment, God has actually caused the restoration for the pain that another person has caused to me. And in that way, he is writing the wrong that the person doesn't deserve to have righted in their life. I, I don't know if I said that completely right. What I want to say is when I let go of punishing 
the offender and I say, I'm going to open up space. I'm going to stop being the one who writes this wrong in my life. I can't write it. I'll never fix what this person has hurt in my life. Only God can fix that. But when God fixes it for me, he also pays the debt for the person who owes me. So in this way, God actually heals both the abused and the abuser. By continuing to hold the anger you have a right to, you have settled for a meager payment in exchange for the damages someone has done to you. You don't have any power to make another person change or to make them treat you with the love and respect you deserve. You only have power to hold on to this anger you have a right to for the rest of your life or to choose to let it go. This is true for all justifiable anger. Not just when you are abused, but when an injustice occurs, like a doctor error that kills a child, or a drunk driver that kills a teenage driver, or a sexual abuser who abuses a child. You have a choice to hold on to the anger and hatred you have a right to for the rest of your life, out of your righteous judgment, to make the offender pay for their crime. or you can choose to just let it go out of the energy of love and forgiveness. When you choose to just let it go, you open up space to allow God to make the wrongs that have happened to you or someone you love right. As long as you hold on to the job of penalizing the person who has made it, who has hurt you in your life, you block God's power to step in and make it right. In a sense, you're saying, that's okay, God, I got this. I'm holding the anger. I'm holding the hatred. And certainly that's what some of these people do deserve by their actions. In doing that, you are literally blocking God's ability to step in because of your free will and your decision to make this right, you're basically saying to God, I got this. You don't have to make it right. And the question is, do you want to be the one to do that for the rest of your life? Or would you rather have faith, trust God, open space and say, uh, I don't got this, God. I don't have this. I need you to step in. I need you to make it right. And I believe you love me enough to do that. Maybe you're thinking of some anger you hold on to because someone really deserves to be punished, and you hold that anger against them to right the wrong they have done in your life. Ready to let it go in favor of God turning the bad that was unjustly done to you into unimaginable blessings in your life and future? Only God can do that. You're never going to do that holding on to anger and hatred. Here we go. I forgive myself for believing because I have a right to my anger. Letting go of it would not be good for me. I forgive myself for believing by holding this anger. I can punish or hurt or change the one who wrongfully hurt me. I forgive myself for believing God can't make this wrong done to me right. Only my anger can do that. I forgive myself for pouring all my energy into something I cannot do. I can't make this person change and treat me with love and respect. I can't bring my dead teenage daughter back to life. I can't make this person give me back what they took from me. I forgive myself for believing by holding this anger. I can somehow even the score with my abuser, the drunk driver, the person who hated me. I forgive myself for believing the anger I hold against someone else hurts them and protects me. I forgive myself for holding anger I have a right to as an act of loyalty to another person. I hold anger with dad because he hurt mom. 
I give myself permission to take back my power, to use it the only way I can, to release the anger I have a right to. I give myself permission to say yes to this justifiable anger, and I call it up and release it from my body, mind, and spirit. Without this anger, I am free to truly forgive this person who does not deserve forgiveness. Without this anger, I open up massive space where God compensates me for the wrongs that have been done against me. Without this anger, I don't have to be perfect. I can forgive myself for the wrongs and hurt I have caused to others, even the hurt I have caused to my abuser. Without this anger, I am free to accept the hatred that separates me from taking in God's love in my life. Without this anger, I am free to accept the hatred that separates me and my children from taking in God's love in their lives. Without this anger, I am free to forgive myself for the hatred in my own heart. By releasing the justifiable anger in your life, you instantly open up space for divine compensation for the wrongs that are done to you by someone or that are done to someone you love. May you be free from the burden of judgmental anger and hatred in your life. May you be free to use your power to let go of the anger and hatred in your heart, to open space for more of God's love and healing right now. May you feel worthy of God's healing in your life and family. Emotional polarity technique can help you to release what no longer serves your life or your future. This is not where you thought you were going. It's so much better. Thanks for listening. As always, you can subscribe to this podcast, like us on Facebook, and go get your free training at eptworks.com. I'm Dr. Annette Cargioli, the Forgiveness Doctor. Until next time, listen, love, give. EPT Works.